can slow out than Pat Doherty and beat him. So Janine needs to be very careful. Dave's tactic is often to take it out hard early and uh, gap the other rider and just stay away. Janine hopefully was paying attention to that and won't be caught in such a way. But she'll need to give him a little bit less room if he's to prevent him from making a jump as he comes off the bank. Dave at the moment in a position and sure enough there he goes coming off the bank. Janine's going to need to be pretty sharply onto his wheel if she's to be a chance. If she can get in the draft, she's, uh, she's got a good chance here, and she's uh, managed to hold that wheel. She's sitting out hanging about a bike length off the back, which isn't too bad. Dave has a bit of a look around. And gets the bell, 307 metres to go. Janine doing not much work at the moment as she just sits in the draft. Can she take a run at him and come past? She tries to make a move up the back straight, hitting the 200 metres to go line. Dave with a second kick. Janine with a little bit more speed at the moment. Dave may have gone a bit too early, but managing to hold her on the hip now as he comes around the corner. Just a little bit of a drift there out of the lane, but I don't think it's going to do too much to affect this. Janine's going to come around the corner with momentum. It's going to be a real charge for the line, though. And Dave Thomas takes that by half. I know the second between these two. So it'll be very interesting to see how this pans out. There's a world of experience in Pat Doherty, though, so... Never underestimate the value of that in this game. Me. Jennifer staying high on the fence with Pat just sitting below her, trying to stop her going to that big jump. Probably going about as slow as you can arguably go at walking pace at this point. watching each other very intently. With Jennifer staying high still. And Pat just keeping her in his eye. Now got one lap to go. However, the cat and dog still goes on. And it looks like Pat's taken the jump and he's off. Jennifer making chase. Can she get back onto Pat's wheel? Pat looking fairly strong at the moment and he's pushing away fairly hard. Jennifer working very hard to catch on. And it looks like Pat's managed to take it out. Cross the line together. Janine watching Penny very, very closely. Knowing full well that the advantage of being up high on the bank brings. Pace is slowing up here quite a bit. One of the risks here, if someone loses their train of attention for one second, or even less, a quarter of a second, their opponent can be away, and that can be almost impossible to make up that distance. So the tactics go on. Janine continues to push Penny high up the bank up towards the fence to stop her coming coming through quickly or take the advantage of, of that jump off the bank. Coming through into the fourth corner. Not uncommon to see a jump here. However, not this time. Okay, for the bell. So anything could happen. Oh, uh, it looks like Janine's away. Penny's making shows. Janine 
It's holding a reasonable gap at the moment. She comes around the fourth corner. And now it's a charge for the line. But uh, looks like Janine's taken it out comfortably, taking the low side of the track. And Gavin's sitting high, looking for the opportunity to take the advantage of that back. Okay. The positions are swapped now. And Gavin's taking the front. Cat or mouse? Who is who? So Gavin is leading it out into the last lap. So we're coming around for the bell. So Gavin's holding out the front, however, David seems to be coming around, charging for a final finish. Come round into turn four. And it's going to be a big race for the line. They're charging, they're charging in. Very old foes. A lot of water under the bridge between these two. Good friends, so we'll see who comes out victorious today. They seem to be keeping a good pace for the first part of this race. With Ruth sitting up high on the bank and Emily just keeping him on her hip. So, looks like nobody's looking to take off at this point. They just seem to be holding back. Merv, high on the bank. And looks like we're coming into the final lap. Number two, we're neck and neck. So we'll get to see a jump at any time, and it looks like Emily's a jump now. She's kept Merv by about four bike lengths, and continues to power on round bend three. Merv trying very hard to catch up, and he's indeed making some good inroads there. As we're charging for the line, it looks like Emily's taken it by good track, and Carl's sitting down lower. Ian taking the advantage to come forward a little, and Carl doing some faking. Both of them in a position to jump at any stage. It's always interesting to consider the capabilities of your opponent when you're doing this sort of racing because it affects how you might approach the race. Wonder what's going through these guys' minds right now. Just imagine everything that you're seeing, and it looks like Ian's off, and he's going to turn this into a. No, no, Ian's backed it off again. Carl sitting on his wheel and he's closing the gap. He still has a long way to run and it's going to turn into a big sprint at the end. And it looks like Ian's given another burst. Carl trying to come round him, standing down in the sprinter's lane. And Carl's going to have to do a power of work for now, but no, Ian looks like he's taken down by the fence. Two very close to each other, watching each other like a hawk. James sitting there with Nichols on his hip to stop him getting an easy jump on taking the advantage of the banking of the velodrome. It's um, got to be considered that walking pace is not a very slow person with a Zimmer frame. It is in fact normal walking pace. There's a bit of faking going on here and the two are using every tactic in their arsenal in an attempt to gain that advantage for the jump. Still watching each other very closely. Nicholas Cockrell up high on the bank and James Dan holding him there against the fence. Speed's going quite slow and this is a very tactical race. Speeding up a little now as we come into turn three. And as we come up to the bell, the pace is sped up and James Dan seems to have jumped. Can he hold out for a whole lap or is he just going to drag him through on his wheel? Only time will tell. They're coming round to turn three and James is just holding him out. But James is pushing in the sprinter's lane, which he owns, but it's a sprint for the line and it's going to have to push as hard as he can. Start finish line.
Cat six are going to play a big role in this race with the position between the two riders already having changed. Nick sitting up high on the bank, able to exploit the advantage of that banked corner to increase his jump speed. Aaron sitting down close towards the sprinter's lane knowing that he can hold that. Pace slowly starting to pick up with Nick being pushed back up high on the bank and Aaron holding him there on his hip. So come around into turn three. Two are watching each other intently. And it looks like we're into the final lap. Neither of them seem to have taken a jump yet, and the pace has spilled off a bit. However, it looks like Aaron's given a bit more of a burst, and Nick's chasing. Nick's coming close behind him, and may still come round him. And it's a race to the line, and it looks like Aaron has taken a... Oh yes. <laughs> the buzz of the disc wheel on Chris's bike just adds to the tension. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. 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 Coming around on the corner too, the two are watching each other very closely. Chris holding the sprinter's lane and Emerson looking for that advantage that's given by the bank walls of the velodrome. Chris seeing a possible jump, holding Emerson back up onto the fence. Coming around into third turn three. There seems to be a little bit of a burst of pace, but the two are watching each other and it looks like a quick jump from Emerson, but cut off by Chris and the pace backs off again and they're away again. Chris trying to hold the sprinter's lane, Emerson showing a little bit of su superior power there, coming around the outside. He's now asserted the sprinter's lane and has come through for a good... Marcel holding the front position and Neil further off the bank of the velodrome holding the rear. Not Neil. is moving up a little bit here, each faking towards the other in an attempt to coerce the other to jump ahead of when they're ready. Should never be underestimated the psychological aspect of this type of racing. Power's important, but prone speed's brawling most times. So coming into the final lap, the bell rose, the bell rings and the, looks like the sprint is on. Neil sitting closely on Marcel's wheel and he's not slowing down. Coming into corner three, and Neil's doing his utmost to come around Marcel, but Marcel's holding his lane, and looks like...